Greetings, everyone. Welcome to CRWS Counter Racist Business Meeting on Kyrie and the Herald's Race Code War, The Power of Words, Images, and Symbols on the Black Psyche. We're going through pages 250 through 260. And the date is 3-13-2023. Uh, I thought the, um, <laughs> the selection of, of uh, pages was um, very, very interesting and super constructive. And um, the folks who will be tuning in for the broadcast are in for a very um, uh, insightful treat on um, concepts that we've all have been familiar with for most of our existence, but have um, haven't thought about in this manner through the context of race and the white supremacy. <laughs> Um, the first one being a clown. I know I've always thought clowns to be something very interesting. I, I never saw them as a racist image at all. But um, Kyrie and Harold has um, me quite convinced that um, there are some racial under undertones. No, not racial undertones, but the clown is a racial, racial and racist image. And I'm just going to read the introduction from page 250. And he says, and it starts, the clown. What is the meaning of the clown in a white culture? Is it just a creature to laugh at or poke fun at? What is the role of the clown in Western society? What are the symbols of a clown? What is the purpose of a clown? And how does it fit into the concept of racial domination? The modern day clown in white supremacy folklore is a character with big nappy hair and the style of an afro, a really big nose, a large behind, large mouth, big eyes, and, a, and great big feet. These are the physical characteristics that have been linked to Black people and a, a myriad of jokes and racist banter. So just this first paragraph alone uh, made a lot of sense to me because I, I've seen the, you know, the clowns and big red shoes, you know, and the, and the big afros and I, I've seen that so that makes sense and black people historically have have their hairs caught um, nappy and whatnot so a lot of logic behind these words <clears throat> um, and then he has um he poses some more very very logical questions he says here on 251 why doesn't the why doesn't the clown have small eyes small nose and thin lips why not poke fun at these features? The clown symbolizes Black people and poking fun disguises racism as good, clean fun. When an innocent Black child laughs at a clown, he or she is in truth laughing at the image of Black people. This is disguised by painting the clown white to give the impression that it has nothing to do with race. The colorization has a dual purpose. It tells those whites who look or act like a clown that they are stupid and physically ugly. They are visually ugly because they then look like niggers. So this is how uh, race and white supremacy is so powerful because it's able to create these symbols that have multiple meanings. He's calling, he, he says here, dual purposes. You know, just how like in the classroom when um, race, Racist teachers, suspected racist teachers, are, are so called teaching uh, the white child and the non white child is always getting different messages. The white child potentially getting the messages that, you know, he's supposed to be in charge, and the non white child is getting the message that they're supposed to be um, subservient and mistreated. So it's very, it's very much similar to the, the clown concept, you know. Perhaps this is why a lot of, um, <laughs> white people are afraid of clowns. A lot of people in general are afraid of clowns because they have been um, racially coded as black people. We're living on a very, very anti-black planet where people are trained to be afraid of black people. I'll, I'll pause there and see if folks have anything to share or add to the discussion. Uh, can I be heard? You may.
works in the pill. Um, um, I've always kind of thought clowns are, I wasn't, I was terrified, but just, just, just what strange character. Um, um, Uh, Craig, I think you're having um, issues with your microphone. I never really saw the racial, the racial well, Craig, your, your, your mic is like jittery. It's cutting in and out. Uh, can I be heard now? Is that better? Um, say again. Can I be heard now? Is that better? I think so. OK, um, so as I was saying, um, so the clown, I've often seen it mistreated. I never knew the uh, racial kind of symbolism attached to the clown, never noticed it. But I think it is uh, completely evident, especially with the, uh, the characteristics, the, the butt, the hair, the lips, et cetera. Um, maybe that's why I, I think clowns are often mistreated because it's a way for white people to act out. You know, um, that, that's, a, that's a nigger. You know, I'm gonna mistreat. I have th this. This character is nothing but funny and deserves to be mistreated. Um, and that's often how they're depicted on in media too, like on cartoon shows and, and whatnot. Just massive mistreatment. Um, yeah. So I I thought that the the author pointed that out very well. I never I never knew that. Never was able to associate that. Um, yeah, clowns. Clowns are very. Clowns are very strange. <laughs> what it, I think that's a strange character from the white psyche. But I think it's accurate. Thank you, Quaker. Very strange symbol indeed within the white culture and i appreciate him calling this white culture white supremacy white culture it's synonyms to me as far as i'm concerned and then um he he, he decodes this concept further on page 251 he says uh, let me see okay so i read this portion already <clears throat> so it's on 251 that is also why most black people are thought of as comical or as clowns. It is common to hear black men referred to as clowns and buffoons. There is a real mental and social association with the concept of a clown and black males. The large nappy hair means unruly, wild, and savage. Those with kinky hair are unmanageable and inferior. It also means that the people who have this kind of hair are viewed as Clowns, inferiors, and dangerous. This is the kind of humiliation the Jews went through in Nazi Germany. One of the one of the most talked about physical characteristics was the Jewish nappy hair or kinky hair. The closeness of the Jewish hair to that of the nigger apes was that was what Nazi leader Adolf Hitler took as a clear sign of racial and mental inferiority. Hitler believed that this genetic trait must be destroyed to avoid the, to avert the possibility of it affecting the superior white gene. He concluded that this genetic trait was a sign of inferiority and of nigger intrusion into the bloodline. The hair of black people has been a subject of so much ridicule that many have attempted to change their hair. He then goes on to um discuss how black people um, mutilate their hair by like frying it, um, curling it, straightening it, all in a process to change their uh, so-called nappy hair and to straight hair, white hair, because um, race and white supremacy is so powerful that we all have been um, trained to want to get closer to um, whatever it means to look white. And a lot of the times that means mutilating yourself, putting on um, things to make yourself look white <clears throat> and then i really appreciate this paragraph as well because it really goes on to show um just the deep programming we have been afflicted by and uh, even 
non-white people who have been allowed um, a lot of comfort and who a lot of us have been confused to even call so-called successful black people, so-called famous black people. All of us have been afflicted with this condition of being utterly powerless and total victims in this system of white supremacy where we are just conditioned and trained to um, be utterly insane to say the least. And um, this should be motivating us to want to eliminate and replace the system with justice. So this was a, from page 252. He, he like combines um, just all this racist imagery together with um, just direct evidence, I would call it. He says, the same is true. And this is after he's talking about how black people um, wear the, the blonde um, wigs and do all the things to look white and not look how they were um, naturally born, essentially. So he says, the same is true with other physical characteristics of the clown, such as the large nose. The large nose is clearly a trait that has been historically associated with Black people. Even though there are white people with large noses, this trait is not associated with them as a primary physical characteristic. The large, wide, flat noses of Black people have been the butt of many jokes. The issue of large Black noses came into question again with the revelation that the world's greatest pop performer, Michael Jackson, had his nose completely reshaped and recolored. His apparent disgust for his natural facial features was apparently so great that he completely changed his whole physical appearance. He altered his skin color, hair, nose, lips, and eyes. Legendary soul performer Patti LaBelle in a striking interview on the Oprah Winfrey show said, I had that sucker cut off, a direct reference to her big black nose. Her apparent goal is to look more European or white. And this is a message being computed in non-white minds across the globe. The white supremacy is very, very powerful force. And this is why we'll see um, Across the planet, many people are doing things to mutilate their, their bodies and reshape their bodies into uh, something that looks um, white. Or if you're a white person, attempting to look um, non-white or to, to acquire non-white features. All very, very confusing, but this is how the system is designed to be very confusing and very manipulative. And um, I'll see, I'll pause there, see if folks want to um, chime in or maybe share some things they've had highlighted from this section. What do you think uh, the overall, oh, I'm sorry, uh, really quick, what do you think the overall purpose of the, the, the switching of the physical characteristics is for? It's almost as if they're trying to get uh, everyone to meet in the middle somehow. What do you think about that? Uh, my simple answer is I don't know. Um, could you ex uh, could you explain a little bit better? I, I don't think I understand the question. Uh, specifically the part about being in the middle. You, are you saying that um, by having Black people wear robes, they're trying to get Black people to wear robes? You know, what I'm saying is you have a, a large number of Black people attempting to mimic white characteristics, and then you have a large number of white people attempting to mimic Black characteristics. And you know, what's the overall purpose for this? Um, I guess I uh, sorry, I'm a few that, but, uh, but I would I I suspect um, it has to do with racism, <laughs> white supremacy. I think that black white people because of racism, white supremacy, they need to act, act like they, 
that they're better, their features, their characteristics, their features are better than black people, but secretly, and I guess even openly, they actually love the way black people look. They love everything about black people, their hair, their, their, their so-called big butts, their um, noses, everything about it. Um, and then you have black people reacting to racism by covering up their hair, thinking that their that their characteristics are un, unsightly and ugly. Um, so I guess in short, it's black people are reacting to racism, and white people are being white. Yeah, and um, to add to just to add to um, to get some semblance of our answer, I suppose um, I don't know if they're trying to get people to meet in the middle. I just think the business of white supremacy is profitable for non-white people to want to be um, you know, mutilated, mutilating themselves, you know, paying to do so, um, and and that being called like glamour or um, you know, glamour surgery or whatever. And it's also it's also profitable for many of um, white women to want to also get um, plastic surgery to appear to be more um, so called exotic or whatever they call themselves when they look like that. So it's, it's just that's the business of white supremacy, you know. Mutilation has always been very profitable um, in this system, I suspect. So on page 252, he also gives um, just more decodings of um, the clowns. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and actually read here because this is more in sign all lined to what we were just discussing. So for 253, lip reduction surgery among Black people has reached historical levels. The number of Blacks who hate and even talk about big lips is legion no other physical feature has been a subject of as much laughter or talked about more than the lips such such jokes get more laughs when told by black comedians to black audiences than the white clown gets by assenting big lips and spreading bright red lipstick over vast areas to stimulate large lips so just a uh, further example of um, that, just uh, the, the twisted um, uh, projection, you know, driving um, non-white people to hate their natural appearance, you know, want to chop their lips off, you know, make them smaller, while at the same time producing white people such as Kim Kardashians who, you know, paid to get their lips plumped up so it's just really, it's real bizarre. This system we are attempting to counter real, real bizarre. But luckily I, I, I have not been um, confused in this manner. I've always have um, suspected and understood that, hey, you know, thin lips, you know, it's kind of not attractive. You know, I, I heard, I've heard this phrase, thin villainous lips. I don't know where I heard what film I heard this for, but it's always stuck with me. Thin villainous lips and I suspect most racists who are operating this system probably have um, thin villainous lips or just have a very villainous mind in general. That's very interesting. Uh, you, you Please think about where you heard that because thin villainous lips really sticks out. A lot of them do have thin, villainous lips. And also, you know, they always try to portray Black people as monkeys or so, some sort of primate. But, you know, the primates, what do their lips look like? They don't look like, you know, Black people's lips. You know, most primates have those thin lips also. So look at the, uh, the mind games they play with that. Yeah, twisted projection. The clown has everything, like every stereotypical feature a black person is supposed to have: big lips, big nose, big hands, nappy hair, 
But it's, and it is, it's so crazy that it's always been in our face, you know, but as has been mentioned time and time again and common racist logic, you know, many look, few will see, see what, what they're looking at. We've always, you know, maybe some of us understand it or our minds understand it. Our bodies may understand. That's, maybe, that's probably why we react to clowns in a negative way. Hey, hey, this is supposed to. Hey, this is supposed to be uh, some sort of racist imagery of, of myself. I'm not supposed to like this. Very, very odd. It's been in our faces, but I'm glad we have this text now that has allowed us to um, develop some clarity around this concept. Clown allows me to understand, you know, characters like you know the Joker. <laughs> It's the Joker, um, you know, one of um, Batman's most um, celebrated and glorified uh, villains because he's really just decoded as a, um, a non-white, a non-white person, a non-white person. The the, um, the only real threat, the non-white male, actually non-white black male, uh, white people's what they call the only threat to the system are the true threat, the greatest threat. It's really, really interesting. Is it just a scary black male? Possibly. A masculine black male. Why, why is it so villainous? Why is that? All right, yeah, so let's see. Let's see anything else. Well, um, oh, yeah, so I just, um, I guess to put the final note in the coffin over this um, clown and this surgery thing that we've been discussing, um, I do appreciate his, um, like, his conclusion. He says, uh, let's turn 253. They have been told that big butts are undesirable. Many black women have had nervous breakdowns and mental problems because they wanted smaller behinds and a more acceptable or white look. Many of them have spent countless hours in the exercise room hoping to reduce the butt or have endured surgery to remove parts of their posteriors. The media and movies in particular feed us a diet of a skinny white females. These women often have no discernible behinds and appear to be as much male as female. Black women have been called hot and many are considered physical anomalies because of the size of their buttocks. The clown represents an effort to poke fun and establish the behind of the white female as the standard for all female this is another attack on the physical and mental being of black people and um just to um comment on it um we talked about the butts the, the lips the hair the hands it's also um the hands and feet just to comment on that briefly the hands on feet and the um uh, racist logic mind field or just the mind of the of of, of racist people they 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 say black people have um, big hands and back and big feet, which decodes as black people having big penises. You know, um, they they often um, comment on athletes' big hands and big feet. Um, there's been many a uh, famous um, basketball ball players and football players, like Shaq, for example. They are they were always commenting on how big Shaq was, his big hands and his big feet, and all this decodes as hey. You know, non-white people, they're just big, black, dumb creatures with big penises. This is um, just racist folklore, racist thinking, racist mentality that has been um, perpetuated across the planet. So the clown perhaps decodes as another racist symbol of non-white people, particularly non-white people classified as black. Um, I don't have any more notes on the clown. I don't suspect you all do either. If you do, please share them. Um, 
so I think I think that part's interesting. I think largely now uh, the the mood has changed to where now you see a lot of individuals, uh, black, white and non-white, working to get bigger butts um, and and to actually acquire some of these features: bigger butts, bigger lips, etc. And it makes it makes uh, and I think that that kind of goes back into you know white people actually enjoying they actually love the features of black people but you know behind behind out overtly outwardly they have to act like they don't I'm sorry my phone. um so yeah I think I think that's interesting it seems like the white supremacists now that they have heavily victimized black people and theorized them to where black people are wearing wigs, wearing blonde wigs, um, getting all these surgeries to reduce their, their, to just change up their features. Now it's like, it's okay. Those are, those are the desirable, fe those are the desirable features now that everyone, everyone wants to have. And it's, it seems like it's to keep black people kind of behind and like in this, this insane state because now it wasn't okay. So now they were doing whatever it took to please master. And now master is saying, okay, now, now we, now we like those features, those features that you got rid of, we like them now. So it's just, it's like, it keeps black people in this insane depressive state because now they are just constantly displeased with themselves. You know, now these features are, the features that they were born with are now considered, cons the features that they were born with that they grew up to hate are now are now the features that everybody loves and wants. So I think um, I think that kind of goes maybe into the refinement of racism, white supremacy, you know, to constantly just keep black people in this insane depressive state at all times. Yeah, I I I hear what what, what you're saying, and I and I think you're you're onto something. Um, I think non white people have been definitely led to um, uh, be okay with, um, you know, their natural features to the point where, um, you know, it has become, um, it has went from appreciation to like a, a sexualization of our, of our bodies almost um, constantly. Um, I don't think any, I think a person should appreciate their body for what they allow them to do. But um, what, what has happened, um, what I see is that um, everyone, white and non-white people have been placed on the, um, this frequency where they, hey, let's, let's just show up how, how cute we are or how sexy we are or how we look in these, um, these fancy clothing. No one's really, um, you know, Presenting, yeah, it just it's really, it's really, really, um, yeah. The way we look has often it just shows how vain um, the system has is making. So, uh, I, I guess I want to call it ghetto glorification, but it is also refinement of racism and white supremacy. Especially, we have Area Three that is producing a lot of propaganda, which is making it very common for white and non-white people to just think it's okay to just, you know, like exist mostly nude, you know, and show, show off show off their nudeness. But I don't wanna, wanna distract too much from um I don't know if it's still even on the same topic. I, I think it's um important how you brought up the sexualization uh of of I guess those traits, um, because usually, uh, I, I what I've observed. <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. What I've observed is mostly that those traits are, you know, sexualized. Um, it's, it's largely revolved around the hips of black females, the butts, and other, I guess, other traits that are now considered sexy, like lips. Um, so I think that's that's also important that you brought that up. Because it, it's not really for any for any other purpose, right? It's just so that people can look more sexy. That's what the white that's what the white supremacist is trying to tell us. At least, at least how I interpret it is that 
bigger butts, bigger lips are sexy. Um, if you want to be the ultimate sex symbol, get the get the bigger butts, the bigger the bigger chest, bigger lips. Much like that um that white that white uh, racist suspect on that rips episode, that female, you know um who, who, what what is she trying to imitate? You know uh, who's she trying to look like? I don't think I don't think black females look like that, but. I guess larger butts, larger chest, larger lips has been heavily associated with black females. Um, also, I think it's also important to note that these uh, these BBLs as well, um, there's a lot of black females also getting them, is a, which I which I don't really understand. And I think that you know that also has to do with the with you know trying to please master. I think it just goes with the training. We've just been trained to do uh, silly, silly, stupid stuff. And um, yeah, going, traveling to a uh, another landmass to get um, a balloon injected, like implanted in your your buttocks is very stupid and silly. So it just, it's just how we've been trained by a racist man, a racist woman. And if enough people are are participating in silly, stupid, and insane acts, we are going to do it. White and non-white people are going to do it because we live in a actual insane. We exist because this ain't living. It's far from living, but we exist in an actual insane asylum. So, yep, I, I've interacted with um, people who have traveled to get their asses sliced, sliced off and get you know, silicone or whatever they put inside them and their and their buttocks. And I could I could tell something has has been um severely severed in the thinking capacity of um some of these victims. And it's it's tragic, but it's it's a learning and um more motivation to want to solve this problem because no one should be driven to such madness to where um mutilating oneself is seen as you know taking care of oneself self-care you know glamorizing that sort of behavior but more evidence and proof that we are living in the system of white supremacy where you know where evil drives apparently so indeed uh just, uh, just, just uh, my last point um i guess this is just for me to say but I think um, as long as Black people are co continuously trying to alter their appearance by wearing weaves and these surgeries, I think it shows a severe lack of self Black self-respect in, in themselves and in Black people. That's it. That, that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, the, the hardest pills to swallow is often those that are true and yeah and um yeah if, if a group of people is attempting to not look how they are born there's something is definitely up with that groups of people um self-respect individual and group self-respect whatever group self-respect looks like you know just just do seriousness you, go ahead do, do you all think it's a fear of um, a certain responsibility Is it a certain responsibility that comes with Black people accepting their image? Oh, of course, yeah. Um, it's it's. Um, what does that actually mean it, when you it, no longer want to subscribe to uh, looking how the white supremacists want you to look? What sort of responsibility comes with that? Oh, it, it just it comes with refusing to to lie to yourself, and which is the only form of respect that exists on planet earth it comes with actually respecting yourself and you know and saying hey you know what i'm not gonna go to this so-called beauty supply store i'm gonna you know look at look up some um natural hair solutions you know I'm, I'm gonna not you know pay money to get anyone's hair on my head i'm gonna work with what i got which is my own hair and I, I'm not going to care about how I look. I'm going to care about, I don't know, maybe my thoughts. Maybe I'm going to put more value into my, my mind and not into my uh, 
my appearance. I, I could just be rambling and not even answer the question, but um, I know, is... you're not rambling. <laughs> so no, that's, that's exactly what I was getting at because, again, what's the responsibility in that? Because even with you having that particular thought process, you have to deal with how others are going to treat you, both white and non white. Yeah, but yeah, that that's correct. But you, uh, me being classified as black, whether I got straight hair or, or nappy hair, I'm going to be mistreated on the basis of my color, no matter what. So I rather, you know, you attempt... a little bit more codified at yeah, that point. Exactly. Um, I, I think a non-white person, they should want to be mistreated while practicing black self-respect, not not be mistreated while you're you're attempting to, you know, to to be accepted by the system you you know you're wearing their wigs you're attempting to look like them think like them talk like them and then you're still mistreated come out embarrassing um, you know but if i'm attempting to be codified you know attempting you know I'm, I'm wearing my 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 locks you know how because i choose to and want to wear my hair in that manner but if i want to hear my wear wear my hair in any other natural form on uh, hair that, that's fine you know i'm not gonna be walking into a workplace wearing fancy clothes or you know expensive Jordans or anything like that I'm gonna be very minimalistic and just very um serious I don't think it's serious to invest a lot of time and energy on how I look versus you know how, how am I gonna solve these problems that don't have anything to do with how I look but more so um with um people who are white choose to treat me because they have classified me as a certain, you know, racial classification. Yeah, that, that was a whole uh, mouthful, but I hope some of it computed with the folks who will, who are listening and who will be listening to this information. Oh, I think, um, oh yeah, so, but folks, if we're done talking about the clown, we can move into the second subject that we um, covered in, in the reading, which was, um, the slave. I, I would appreciate it if um, one of the other hosts could get us started on this section, if possible. Uh, I can read a little bit. The slave. Uh, the symbol of the slave and white supremacist folklore is a black person. Black people and black history are the most dramatic symbols of human enslavement. The color black has been largely degraded and demonized in white folklore and culture. In the majority of instances where this word is used, there are visual or verbal references to black people here or abroad. This association and these symbols even go beyond the tales of the bondage of the Jewish children in biblical stories. The whole concept and idea of slaves, bondage, and servitude are wrapped around the enslavement of Black people in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, I don't know how long you wanted me to keep going. No, that was oh, fine. Okay. <clears throat> that was oh. fine. <laughs> but yeah, this section, um, I was like, wow, this is, um, it makes a lot of sense. It's very um, profound. And I type in a Google slave, you know, I don't see any uh, any of the images of slaves besides people who are classified as black, which goes to show that in um, 2022, under the system of race and white supremacy, slave equates non-white person, especially non-white person classified as black. Uh, I think this part is interesting, and I, I think a lot of non-white people, especially non-white children, who are being indoctrinated in these so-called schools. I think if they had this information and K through 12 information uh, and K through 12, I think that'd be really helpful because I remember just, just hearing about slaves and then I already knew slave meant black, black when I was a, a child because, you know, first grade, learning about slaves, second grade, learning about slaves, third grade, oh, guess what? Black people are slaves again, you know? And then, so I, I've already, I've already thought, yeah, black people, our history and our existence 
only you know slavery and man uh, what that did to my psyche probably wasn't constructive um at all so maybe if 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 i knew that hey you know we we live in a system of white supremacy and if i knew the text of um destruction of black self i would have been able to um plot my existence better but because i'm just thinking i'm hey i'm just a i come from a slave group of people yeah, it really sabotaged uh, what, what i could have been and where I should be. I still think to this day, um, because in 2022, um, I, I'm still a slave, I'm still subjected to the system of white supremacy, still being held back from the things I want and I think I should be doing. But I'm gonna um, read here from 250, 254, it says, in the modern white world, just the mention of the world, word slaves automatically denotes black people and not Jews, despite the many biblical legends. Slavery existed for thousands of years in many parts of the world. Slavery did not begin with the enslavement of Black people. The ancient Romans enslaved the white British, the Arabs enslaved Turkish women, and the Chinese enslaved the Tibetans. There were there are many kinds of enslavement. Um, so I, I, I just just even that simple, you know, not that hey, you know, it wasn't just Black slaves, you know, because I'm as a young victim of racism and white supremacy i'm just thinking wow black people we just we didn't even fight back we didn't even you know but as you actually learn um history what actually happened yeah black people definitely um fought back and um we definitely weren't always slaves we had like um thousands of, of years of existing before white people decided to um, begin this war against us and and during that war put us in slaveries um so very very uh, interesting and, and i'll pause my my line to see if folks can chime in uh i think absolutely in the system of racism and white supremacy the word slave is associated with black people one thing that i've noticed a lot of suspected racist, especially when the discussion of reparations comes up, they always try to talk about how black people own slaves. And, um, and it's usually, it's just usually, you know, a white person practicing racism, trying to distract black people. Um, black, from what, from what I've observed in history, yes, slavery has existed for a long time as well. People have mistreated one another, but I think in, in when we talk about black people and white and uh, being enslaved by white people, I think that's a completely that's a like a different type of slavery, you know, chattel slavery. Um, from what I've read, even though a lot of people had slaves, they weren't treated inhumanely, they weren't tortured, they weren't killed, they weren't raped. You know, there was a, there was a lot of I guess laws in place that prevented that kind of stuff from happening. But when white people uh, enslaved black pe black people on the planet, uh, you know that none of that none of that applied to them. So I think that that is something that's also important to to think of <clears throat> to bring to bring up. Um, so what, black black being you know synonymous with slavery, I think oh, you know he talks about this white slavery and. You know, it, throughout like like O5 was saying throughout history, you don't you don't really see any other any other group of people really being enslaved. Maybe maybe a, a Native Americans to some extent, but it's re it's really just black people and Native Americans. You don't ever really hear about white people being enslaved or even what they call indentured servitude. Like I know through throughout in my history classes. I, I didn't learn about any of that, any of that stuff. When, when you're learning about slaves, you're learning about black people. That is only black people. And like, like uh, on the screen that shows, you just typing in the word slave, only images of black people. So what is the, what is the relevance of bringing um, indentured servants or white, white slaves into, into a conversation about slavery? There's just more confusion than Mr. And Mrs. Technically, aka the white supremacists, pull out of their trick bag. You know, whenever we get to asking too many questions that in the end, <clears throat> excuse me, that in the end always implicate white supremacists. 
So you never hear anything about indentured servants or slavery in this part of the world or that part of the world until you're asking too many uh, questions about antebellum slavery. Just more confusion. Yeah, and uh, I, I have a couple of things to say in regards to uh, how white people say um, non-white people have slaves too. Yeah, um, so-called uh, Africans, ancient Africans, yes, had um, slaves uh, who were often prisoners of war, who often um, were allowed to, you know, exist amongst um, their captors and a relative um, comfort, you know, they, 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 they worked for them until they were allowed um, to um, leave or until um, the conflict had ended. That's how the slavery um, played out, you know. But when white people started their concept of slavery, you know, it, it, it was very, very um, grotesque and very, very different, you know. And you had um, people experimenting on people. You had people being being raped and people being fed to animals and all sorts of horrendous things happening on their white, the white concept of slavery. So if, even if um, both both peoples had slavery, it just, it, it, it was um, very different. And it's, it's both, it's very incorrect for anyone to have slaves. Slavery should not exist. You know, from the beginning, there should have been a system of justice, you know, guaranteeing no one is allowed to be mistreated and those who need help receive constructive help. That should have been um, from the beginning, but for some reason it's taken us this long to even begin thinking about such a concept. So it's incorrect for anyone to have a slave, to be a slave. The concept should have never made it to the planet. So should, should have never made it to planet Earth, but here we are. And um. I really appreciate how he decodes and brings some um, color. And color is very um, significant in the system of white supremacy. They've attached many different meanings to colors and, and black in particular meaning um, power and control, but also being a color that means um, to be controlled, subservient, dominated, and, <clears throat> and a color to be feared. He says here on 254, the connection of words like slavery to a specific color is part of the color and racial indoctrination. The goal is to establish a mindset that equates the color black with slaves and regulates black people regardless of their present social condition to slave status. In the concept of whiteness, peace and freedom are associated with white bears or white doves. Enslavement and slavery are also connected to such things as terror, blackness, and darkness. One of the dreaded symbols of enslavement and repression in the white world was the black suited, black booted SS and the Nazi Germany. Wearing black with red emblems was designed to strike terror in the hearts of those opposed to Nazism in Germany. And then he goes on to mention like the various um, different um, jobs in the system that uh, wear black and that are in subservient roles like um, butlers and, and, and maids and um, Catholic priests. You know, Catholics are supposed to be servants of um, the religion, of their religion. So they wear black because black means, you know, serve. If you're a black thing, you're a black creature, you're, you're supposed to be um, um, some sort of servant, I suspect. That's what this, this color decoding means to me. And the folks have notes in regards to um, the slave that they, that they wanted to share or wanted to add to. Um. Can I be heard? You may. Oh, okay. Um, on page 255, uh, the words black, slave, and servant, and white supremacist culture and mindset are interchangeable terms. <clears throat> the wearing of black 
as in the traditional dress of the maid and butler symbolizes servitude and obedience. If not, why not wear brown, blue, white, or red? The servant relationship also exalts the employer to the status of a controller. And that made me think about remote controllers and how most remote controllers are black and in the shape of phallic symbols. And so I was thinking, you know, what was the symbolism behind that to control the black phallus that made me think about uh, earlier in the discussion when you were talking about uh, athletes and how they're just big, dumb, you know what I'm saying, and how they have to be controlled. So that's all I have. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ray. Anyone else would like to share some notes from this portion of the slave? Um, I I don't I don't necessarily think I have any, any more notes on this section. I think um everybody is kind of got gotten it for me. I agree with much of what's been said. Uh, ultimately, the slave is associated with black, the color black. Um, I did I did like uh, kind of earlier in 254 when he talked about white slavery. He said during the earlier part, the early part of the 20th century, trafficking in white female prostitution was called white slavery. The term white slavery clearly denotes the difference between regular slavery that is black and a special kind of unusual enslavement. White slavery means that white females have been forced into servitude and bondage against their will. So I thought that that is also important. Um, this isn't the only instance where uh, I guess a word like slavery and to kind of differentiate it from something like from in order to make it sound like it's out of the norm, you attach something like white slavery to it. So when you when you mention white slavery, that's supposed to make people think, oh, like that's that's unusual. Stuff like that doesn't happen all the time, you know. Um, so slavery, slavery is 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 the, the usually in slavery, it's associated with black people. In this instance, it's white slavery, and and it kind of makes me think as I'm talking thinking about it. This uh, Russia Ukraine stuff, uh, a lot of these news, um, what I've been seeing on various platforms, is these news uh, places talking about how uh, Ukraine's not a, a so called developing or third world country. This is, this is an unusual thing to be happening here, which is why everybody should be concerned about it. I wonder what kind of, uh, what kind of name they'll give that. Um, I don't think they've, they've termed it yet as like a white war or something yet but I we all know that's what it is um but I think that it's kind of like it's kind of similar what they're doing with white slavery and how they're trying to make you know <laughs> uh, everybody care about Ukraine right er so everybody should be concerned about this white slavery because this isn't normal white women are not usually uh, put in the bondage against against their will this, this is Slavery is usually only reserved for black people, just like war is usually reserved for uh, for non-white people and black people. It's usually it's suspected and even expected for war to be breaking out where where you have majority black populations, non-white populations. It is highly unusual and and unexpected to be having war where you have a population of mostly white people. Um, I think I think that they that these two are kind of uh, related when I think about it. I have seen a lot of the white supremacists uh, attempting to get everyone to be sympathetic to the Ukraine situation. Um, here in Dallas yesterday, I was driving along uh, I-20, and there's like this usually there's this, these two big gargantuan flags, one United States flag, one Texas flag. And yesterday 
I was driving on the highway and there's the United States flag and this big gargantuan Ukraine flag. I just thought to myself, like, one way or another, they really want us to be sympathetic to their plight. And, you know, they, they control the media. They control uh, basically how everyone thinks, or at least they attempt to. I always got to be sympathetic when, when white people are being mistreated. Never when non-white people are. One thing that, um, you, you know what, I, I don't, I don't want to get too far off into that. But, um, yeah, racism as usual. Precisely. Um, just the, the final thing I, I, I want to put out there for folks uh, who, who will not be getting a copy of Race Code War. Um, this part is really significant and then just puts the hammer and a nail that um just um the coded messages are are in everything and, and of course a, a word like slave um and the system white supremacy has um a, a number of meanings and uh Kyrie and Harrell <clears throat> does an excellent job at uh, attempting to um describe it. So on 255 he says. All things good or bad that are related to the idea of slavery, severance, or servitude is symbolized by the wearing of black. The association extends to every facet of life and a white supremacist culture. In politics, the highest elected official is the land. The highest elected official in the land is the president of the United States. He or she is considered an elected public servant. The president rides along in a long black car and is attired in mostly dark suits. The dark colors also have a very interesting connotation. The black color is a symbol of power and status in the white world. The black tie and evening dress are considered the highest and finest style marriage for men. <clears throat> marriage for men requires a black suit or black tuxedo while women are married in white, which means purity. It is indeed a paradox and strange juxtaposition However, despite the contradictions, overwhelmingly, Blackness is derogatory and symbolizes such things as slavery, servitude, and evil. And I think that is very, very true in the system of white supremacy, unfortunately. More motivation to want to produce a concept known as justice. And um. I think um that is a good time to pause for a quick uh, attempt to kind of erase this um commercial one second. A minute. There are four types, four, four forms of it that you can get to by going to producejustice.com. Uh, you'll see it in the textbook, the forms that it takes. And that is black people's biggest drawback when it comes from not only not having a code, but not really being focused on countering and eliminating racism as the reason for being. Whereas the white supremacists, their whole reason for being for existing is white supremacy. They have no other reason for even existing. This is why they're in such opposition to anybody changing it. Because if you take white supremacy away from a white person who believes in white supremacy, you've taken everything. 
You haven't just taken something. And it's the same way with black people. You take the, way to, the ability for a black person to show off to another black person, that black person is, is now suicidal. Everyone, please go to producejustice.com, develop your own counter racist code so we can produce a system of justice. All right, moving on to this concept here, very uh, another another interesting one. The Dama Matrix. And I'm just gonna get it started with Kyrie and the Hero words. Um, 256. Another very powerful and glaring example of the symbolic connection of blackness to slavery and servitude is the sexual practice of the Dhamma Matrix, tradition, ritual, or racial domination. The sexual domination practice uses color and subtle race symbols in plain sight. And if you're paying attention, looking at the screen, it's quite obvious. It's quite obvious that. That is correct. And um, just while these um, images on the screen, I'm going to continue, continue reading because I've always, the system is so um, sick because um, when I was in university, you know, this um, dominatrix, you know, this, this was promoted <laughs> on the campuses, um, you know, I guess you know free sex, kinky sex, what they were what, what they were calling it. So this was um what what was um talked about. I remember um going to a a a sex workshop where they were passing around dildos. I'm like, well, I don't know why they're passing this to me. I'm a male. I don't have a, a use for for this. But you know, now that I I I understand like the anti-sex propaganda and promotion that was going on there, it all makes total sense. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna read on to to what the um <clears throat> what all this stuff means. Um, he says the practitioners of this form of sexual gratification unashamedly use language, color, sex, and race codes to express domination and control. And this bizarre behavior, the use of dark colors and dark references are direct and blatant expressions of color domination. And the practice of this kind of sexual domination, which is often referred to as bondage or sadomasochism in magazines, movies, and in real life interactions, the dominatrix or mistress of bondage is the dominant individual. She is the female equivalent of the master and must be served and strictly obeyed. So he's getting into this um, just really, really bizarre um, Urugu psychology, you know, white people, they, they have a blast and, and they have an actual, not blast, they have a need for power and control. And I guess when they have that established, sometimes they want to experience what it, what it is like to be dominated and controlled. Even though I, I've heard some very um, um, less confused people decode um, this aspect here, this concept dominatrix, um, it, was, it was told to me that um, <laughs> it's often thought that the person um, being um, like abused during this this role play activity that that is a person who is um, not in control. But the person being abused actually is the person in control because they set all the limits to like their abuse. Um, and, and this was, uh, I was like, oh, that makes sense because uh, a lot of non-white females, of course, tragically, do this sort of work, this sort of um, sex work where they are paid to abuse um, mostly white men, but they're still... Um, they're led to believe that they're they're actually uh, you know and the powerful ones because they're dominating the, the white man, but actually the white man is still in power because they set the limits and there there's a safe word and there's certain things that can and can't be done. So it's just a, a really sick illusion that allows the the white person to get I don't know that sadomasochist uh, energy out uh, that 
um, self annihilating aspect that we learn about in the um, ISIS papers, how they uh, just really treat themselves um, poorly because they have a really incorrect relationship to their skin and to their bodies. But I just, I may be uh, interpreting that text wrong and just may be still confused. Um, folks like to um, share any of their notes from this portion of the text. Um, I just wanted to add, I suspect you are not um, wrong about that. I, much like dominatrix, I, I've seen numerous examples of where white people specifically, especially white males, need to feel humiliated in sexual acts. I think the dominatrix is another example of that. Um, I thought that this, this section was very interesting. <laughs> um, in my opinion, this this has never, ever really made sense to me. This whole dominatrix, this kinky sex um, category. I don't understand why anyone would want to feel pain, humiliation, or anything like that during, uh, during the act of sex. Um, I did like on page 257, when he would, when he, when he said, um, it gives the impression that a black female is punishing them for the years of injustice. This is probably why black females are hired to act as mistresses in sexual domination games. An increasing number of dominatrix women are big butt black females. The color fantasy sometimes spills over into a need for real life, very black women to administer abuse and humiliation confused victims, unfortunately. Um, is this desire a deep reflection of a guilty conscience that for centuries has enjoyed a racially superior status because of the degradation and abuse heaped on black and red people? Uh, you know, I'm gonna answer that. I don't, I don't know. Um, I could see why someone would suspect that though. Um, I think white people I don't even know if white guilt is actually a thing, honestly. Um, but I think white people are just so, <clears throat> what's the word I'm looking for? So insane that they need to feel humiliated when they perform acts of sex because deep down inside, they hate themselves and their skin color. Um, are these whites acting out a secret desire to be dominated, spit on and urinated on by people of color? Um, I don't, I don't know either, <laughs> but I, I, I suspect that white people know that black people experience things differently. I don't like the word superior. Um, it's, it's almost like, a uh, some sort of weird projection. Like, yes. why don't you like the same things that I like? You know, why, do, why don't you like to be urinated on? You know, why don't you like to have uh, sex with feces, with animals, with children? Why don't you like to change your gender? I, I, I like these things. Agreed. Uh -huh. is, is, is there a deep fear of Black domination? And are these games played out to alleviate those trepidations? I, I think, I think in order for white people, the motivation that they have for continuing to practice racism and dominate black people, non-white people in all areas of people activity, I think they have to come up with this lie and this fear of black domination. I, if any, if anything, in my opinion, history has shown that black people have no interest in dominating white people. They just want freedom. They want to be free from oppression. I don't, I don't think there's any evidence that shows that black people want to dominate white people, but white people continue to uh, continue that narrative. They continue to, to spout those lies. Uh, this is why there are many magazines that feature the deep fantasies of white males being dominated by black females or females dressed in hard black colors. The white female in black is the dark dominatrix. So I thought that that was a pretty good, uh, pretty good section out of there. 
the questions. Um, I think we're can can make an individual think about about that. Um, why do why do white people <laughs> really? I, I think especially black people, non-white people who are engaged in these tragic arrangements. I suspect that there are a number of black people who are having to engage in this kind of activity who are probably embarrassed about it, but for some reason, uh, probably their conditioning and training, uh, they're going to act like it's it's normal. I mean, surely the media makes it seem like it's normal because they're constantly talking about it. All the characters are dressed like this. Um, Ray shared a, a, a great photo if um, I could put it up, um, but constantly, you're seeing images of people dressed in leather <laughs> and these kind of sexual uh, dominatrix outfits. And it makes it seem like this kind of behavior, this kind of lust for that stuff is normal, um, but it absolutely is not. I don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, Yahoo said something really interesting in the chat, and um, greetings to the, uh, the audience, folks who are um, listening to this broadcast. Yahoo says, it's self-consumption. The, the Urugu suffers from constant cellular mutilation um, through autophage, the inward violent shows outward on us. Um, I'm going to have to do some um, research on what autophage is, but very, very interesting, very interesting. I do see, I, I see what was mentioned, how the, like their gutter sex, that experimental sex that they like to pretend is sex. I just see that as just being, you know, anti-nature, you know, if you're, um, I, I just see it as being anti-nature, it's just, um, what what the Urugu? <clears throat> um, it's all about going against what is naturally should be, has always been be, has always been. But hey, we we're, we're the Urugu. We're gonna do our own thing, and it's gonna be very very bizarre. Just looking at this, um, they just this wanna is, control our attraction to one another. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And looking at this, so. Um, um magazine this was this magazine was referenced in a book but not this particular issue but this is one that popped up for us and just this is just so vile we have um uh, if, if, if you could pay it, if you could see what um what it says it says um sex and the ku klux klan let me taste her meat you know that you know just that whole like sex for white people is not the same as it is for non-white people it's a it's, a, it's like a, a aggressive act you know it's, it's energy energy consumption you know whereas for non-white people it may be a, some sort of like energy sharing but i'm not a sex doctor or any doctor i'm just confused like i'm trying to solve this problem but and it also says blood loss the art of tampon sucking i can guarantee the art of tampon sucking was not produced by a non-white person it was certainly produced by a white person because this is what the yugi is all about this right here you know these images would not exist if the planet was not dominated by insane people who practice racism and white supremacy really, really bizarre motivation to solve the problem you know motivation to solve the problem hopefully should be or motivation to solve the problem or or you know leave the leave 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 planet earth cease to exist because you shouldn't be on this planet unless you're working to eliminate the planet <laughs> i mean <laughs> you shouldn't be on this planet unless you're working to eliminate the race problem you know sole reason for existence other than that you gotta find this planet different realm of existence and Yahoo says autophage is a process of the cells regenerating when we sleep. Well, the different types of melanin have different phages. 
they don't heal when they sleep properly or completely. Interesting. If you could um, post some um, more material on this information, that'd be really helpful. Like, uh, if you if you have if you're privy to any books or documentaries or links, please post them in the chat, uh, Mister. Yeah, please do. That's uh, very interesting. Yeah, would be very interesting. Also, um, if any, real quickly, if any information can be had as to uh, if that's um, if that happens more in certain seasons. I don't know about you all, but, you know, those summer months are quite different than any other time of the year. That's all I have to say about that. Interesting. I got a lot of dominatrix and like sexual leather action vibes from the new Batman movie. And also, this picture reminds me, yeah, this, this, this is very common. We have um, just in your face, only difference in 22 version is that um, Catwoman is played by a victim of racism, aka a non white person. But yeah, that film had a lot of, um, you know, just imagery of two people dressed in leather, you know, fighting, but it looked like they were, um, uh, it looked very pleasurable and there's a lot of grunting and moaning going along with it so you know the audience is supposed to get the the idea that this is sexual because in the racist mind you know it's, you know conflict is pleasurable sexual for them it's, you know so bizarre you know dressing up in dark things you know makes them probably feel so it, it makes their existence, uh, I don't know, like more enjoyable, you know, and then it enhances, it enhances their gutter sex, possibly. Well, not possibly, but seemingly, because that's why they do it. That's why it, it's happening every single day. That's why it's a billion dollar market of sex toys, of, of leather suits and people buying black whips and black dildos. I think that all sorts of it's kind of like it's kind of similar all sorts of just madness you know and then when neely fuller has said sex is a very uh, powerful motivating force and white people have took that idea and ran with it led us all to a um, existence of absolute debauchery what? Our duty to understand what's happening and, and encounter it to the best of our abilities, or we shall too um, remain incorrect. So, what, what else do I want to get at? Okay, can you pull up uh, the picture I put in the chat? I put a link in the chat. Helen sent it. Is it is it not the one that you see right now with the Batman? No, it's a different one. Okay. Um. Yeah, I had a I had a picture queued with this family. This one. Yes, sir. Interesting. Did you want to um, variety? Huh? Um, well, Helen wanted us to to wanted me wanted us to share this, and um, clearly, I would I think um, all these females are dressed up in black leather, um, especially the the mom in the back. I think that's what the so called dominatrix walk walk in wearing. It's like her daughters are wearing like the revealing clothing. Um, very, very telling coming from a family that uh, I think tries to mimic and uh, mimic black people victims of racism and kind of makes fun of them. Um, very interesting. I've never seen this kind of photo before. I don't know how old or new this, this photo is, but. 
Yeah, it's, very interesting. Yeah, Kim Kardashian, the sus- suspected white supremacist known as Kim Kardashian, very interesting. I, I, she's also um, um, on the form on the forefront of like normalizing debauchery and yeah, just normalizing um horror horrorism. I'm gonna call it or right, just normalizing racism, white normalizing <laughs> deprived depraved acts of racism, white supremacy. And I, I've noticed that she's been rocking um, the GIMP aesthetic, you know, the leather aesthetic, in particular, this picture right here, I'm referring to this total, you know, just, just, just wanting that black body, you know, just wanting that black body so much, you know, she's got the surgery, but she's, she, she could never get the color, but this is compensation for that. The black leather, you know, the black items, yeah. What is it that they know that we don't know? <laughs> Tragically, tons. Tragically. Yeah, and so he says a, a number of really, really interesting things about um dominatrix but i would urge everyone to go get their copy of race cold war because i can't i can't read i can't read the entire book to you although i would wish i could so but but if folks want to share any more notes on the dominatrix before we get to the final um, topic of the discussion All righty. All right, so the White House, a word, a phrase we've heard our entire existence. I have been existing for 30 years and, and it wasn't until I read a couple of pages from a book where I actually thought about, hmm, White House, yeah, that, I guess it is racially coded, you know? I've always known it was called a White House, but hey, it's it's a White House. They call it a White House. Not everyone's thinking that this is a symbolic name, you know, that could have um, a number of hidden meanings, hidden in plain sight meanings, actually if one was actually paying attention to how this world functions and, and to the way language is used by people who call themselves white. But now after reading this text, I understand the White House is super, super profound racial symbol. So, and I, I just wanna um, hear, I just wanna share these very logical questions that he poses on page 259. One of the most enduring symbols of power and domination in the Western world is the White House. No other color symbol of domination is as blatant or as large. The White House is a symbol of the political economic domination of white civilization. What does the white and White House really mean is it just a color or does it have a much deeper meaning? And I'm just gonna read, um, well, I'm gonna summarize the first paragraph or the second paragraph where he um, decodes the White House as being like a representation of um, just the white settlement. Hey, this is like um, the most powerful, example of a white settlement and this particular landmass known as the United States um we're, 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 we're they're in charge you know in, in regards to how this world is going to function in a lot of areas so that's what the White House represents the one of the most powerful white settlements aspects of white civilization basically uh, and then he says here on page 260, 
The White House is a symbolic reminder that this land was developed for the advancement of white people. The White House is also a symbol of the most powerful group of white people. All of the major decisions that impact the white world flow through the White House. The effective majority of white people believe in the concept of a White House. For many, this symbol provides a sense of calm and reassurance that everything is all right and under control. Many white people would have tremendous emotional and psychological reactions if the White House were renamed or if it were painted a different color. The White House represents something very, very different to white people from what it represents to black people. It is not just a White House, it is a symbol of white civilization. All hell would break loose if someone or some group tried to change the color and name of the White House. This will be like removing the white collective security and stability blanket. So that makes a, a lot of sense. And I was I started to think, dang, even in movies, whenever I've seen a movie where like the White House is like destroyed or targeted, it's always a black person in charge. You know, like in, in the movies that come to mind, it's it's I think it's Olympus has fallen. I think um it's black male president, White House gets attacked. I mean. Let me I'll make sure I'm not. The just... day after, or you have the day after. Is it the day after tomorrow or 2012? It was one of those movies where Danny Glover was the president. Um, I I don't know if I've seen that one, but I know I know this one involved. Maybe that's a president. Yeah, no, never mind. But uh, anywho, I've never I don't see many images of the of the White House being um. Um, destroyed or oh, all right ever 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 heard any discussion of um what does the white house name mean why is it called the white house no one even says it's called the white house because of the color it's just not mentioned you know it's just that well most white people know what it symbolizes and most non-white people have been you know just so confused and just so um misdirected that why would we even think about what the hell the White House means? You know, just it's the White House. The president lives there. And that's all we need to know about it, probably. I may be in error, you know, but I suspect that's how that's that's how the majority of us have been led to think about the White House. They want us to think that the white supremacists in the White House operate purely without blemish. can't afford for anything for us to have any other uh, thought process regarding that. Yeah, and then he talks about what the White House means to uh, white people, which is very, very um, significant and should be known by non-white people. Page 260. The White House to most white people means their house and home. It is, no, it is no accident that the number of white houses far outnumber any other color of houses in the nation. Each white family in the symbolic sense has some identity with the idea of a white house. This is illustrated in many popular cultural sayings and images. One of the most popular cultural symbols is getting married and living in a white house or a house with a white picket fence. Changing of the name to the Black House or Red House would imply to many white people that they are no longer in control and in charge. So, yeah, white picket fence, uh, a nice family home, all relates to maybe we got we got to you know maintain make sure we maintain the system of white supremacy because that's how we have decided to, you know maintain all of our comfort. We, we, we established this brutal, horrific system that totally destroys, retards the planet and its creatures and people, but we're willing to sacrifice that, you know, for our comfort. So we could go home to a nice, comfortable couch and a fridge full of poison that we call food. And we're gonna maintain, we're gonna maintain this forever. 
you know but it's our duty to not allow such a incorrect act to be maintained forever yeah i wanted to um add the the white house i don't know if it was in this book or something else that i read but it it said that the white house looks like a southern plantation home so it looks like master's house on the plantation um i have never actually thought about that but when that was said it made so much sense to me um i think it's completely accurate uh, also the author brings up like trying to attempting to change the name of the of the white house what a huge uproar it would cause it would cause and i think that's completely accurate um there this uh the white house is a racist symbol uh for many black people non-white people globally much like a lot of the a lot of the things that this uh that america was founded upon like the constitution i believe that that is also a a piece of racist propaganda that needs to be um, revised, actually completely done away with and, and completely done, uh, redone. Um, but I, I suspect many, many white people in this country will not have no intentions of doing that. And I, I think it just kind of goes hand in hand with race, white people's motivation to stop practicing racism. I don't think they have any will, any, they, they don't have any will, they have no reason to stop it, just like they have no reason to change the Constitution or or change the name of the White House, because for them, it's a win for them. It, it constantly reminds them, like uh, like the author says, it gives them comfort, the name of the White House, that gives them comfort, a white, white people's ha haven, safe haven, white people's settlement, the ultimate white people settlement on the planet. Um, so they have no intentions of changing that or getting rid of that just like they have no motivation or no motivation to stop practicing racism ray did you want to chime in oh uh, yes quite cool you have made the statement <clears throat> that you never thought about uh the white house as a, a large you know plantation house uh what what do you think about that concept on a um a planetary scale you know the white house looked as the big house on a global scale being the the global big house well seeing as how um america is considered the greatest uh most powerful uh civilization at the moment I think it it's it sends the message that th this is where the masters are that rule the planet, and everybody who who is non-white and black um, answers answers to these to the big house. I hope that answers the question. Yes, sir. It does. I you know I just asked that because. I think is stupid, silly, primitive, and pitiful for Black people anywhere on the planet, you know, for us to be having these uh, meaningless squabbles, you know, like, you know, this FBA, ADOS, or just wherever you are on the planet, like, we're all victims of racism. And it just seems that here in the Northwestern Hemisphere, uh, there's a squabble about uh what what slaves belong to this plantation is 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 dumb in my opinion oh yeah it's very silly but that's um a behavior that was given to us by racist man racist woman and we have another programming we have to tort or it will continue to hold us back from doing what we should be doing. But yeah, I've, I've noticed that as well, you know. I'm not FBA, I'm ADOS, you know, we beefing with the with, with the God and flag people. It's just ridiculous. You, you, you explained it perfectly, you know. The whole planet, the plantation, just because you're from so-called um, America, so-called Nigeria, so-called Mozambique, where I saw 
I guarantee all those places are not how they should be, full of mistreatment, especially full of mistreatment of non-white people. So let's, let's just understand the whole planet is a plantation. Prison, cell, and, and, and if, you know, if we can um, communicate this, please go to producejustice.com, get your copy of the code book, and that may um, <clears throat> clear up a lot of confusion. And I, I do appreciate Kyra and Harold's um, conclusion on um, the White House, because uh, again, hammer and a nail of, of exactly what we're dealing with, exactly what these racist symbols mean, because I, you know, just these 10 pages, I learned tons and um, things that were always in front of me um, finally revealed themselves to me. And, you know, the clowns, the White House, the slaves, even though I kind of already got the, the slave aspect of my existence and the dominatrix. Oh yeah, and before, before we get too far away from it, remember that scene but on Pulp Fiction with, with, with um, let me just type it in for everyone, just, just the Pulp Fiction. Yeah. yeah. Remember this, remember this, this character here from Pulp Fiction who rapes the black male and that film. It was about racism. It was about white. Another phallic symbol. Yeah, it's what white supremacy is all about. You know, white people you know, mm -hmm. wanting to feel powerful while mistreating non-white people. It's what it's all about right here. This image says a lot. Actually, this image right here says a lot. But you know, we, we already covered this. We already covered this. You know, white culture. This is white culture. All right, so back to the uh, white house. People recognize this. <laughs> I, I recognize these as like rituals and ceremonies that white people are constantly putting on, you know, for their acts. You know, every time they every time they have to mistreat somebody, it's it's a ritual. The the ceremony that they perform. Uh, I think they've been doing that since slavery, and you know it. It just goes back to you know racism, white supremacy, white people hate, acting like they hate black people, but secretly being in love with them. They have uh, dehumanized black people's rituals and ceremonies, and meanwhile they are performing their own, and all of the, all of theirs are to mistreat people classified as black and non-white. Precisely. All right, so back to 261. Kyrie and concludes on the White House by saying, in order to smooth transitions and continuity, the home environment must be solid and reasonably free of derogatory social situations. With a stable and nurturing environment, the human mind, body, and soul will develop to its highest capacity. When there is chaos and disorder, the minds and behavior of children will reflect that environment. For the majority of white females, the home is a place to nest, to settle, to reproduce and raise a family. She must have all of the symbolic and psychological trappings to effectively convey the message of the history, development, and survival and future of the race. The White House is the mother of all houses and the nation. It is one of the most powerful and dynamic symbols of whiteness. I was like, damn, it's powerful. White woman, they have um, the White House as a, as a beacon of inspiration and something to remind them that, hey, I got to maintain my, my family, pop out this white child to do my part in maintaining the system of white supremacy. You know, non-white females, uh, they are directed to the county offices. They don't really have a White House to look to, you know. They don't really have um, any of that. But I may be incorrect. <clears throat> PurdueJustice.com to get serious about solving this problem. According to racist logic, in order, I suspect in order for the white women to have this peaceful home and that's 
that where no chaos is present, they have to export that chaos to somebody else, you know, to, to have something com to compare to. And they export all of the chaos, destruction towards black people. Black homes are full of chaos, uh, destruction, et cetera. As the, as the author mentioned, kids grow up in those, in, black children constantly growing up in those environments. Whereas white, white people get to enjoy peace, uh, tranquility, all, all at the expense of people classified as black. I will say quake here. Yeah. Yep. Create gro glo global um, conflicts around the world and then tell their little white offspring and say, you know, you can have a much worse, you could be like the little brown children being bombed. Being bombed by who? By people like me and you. Ah. Um, yeah, that concludes uh, my notes. Maybe we could get into uh, closing comments. Anyone like to begin? Um, constructive business meeting. Uh, looking forward to the next one. Uh, that's that's it for mine. Very constructive business meeting. Uh, this book, Race Gold War by Kari Inaharu, is an excellent addition to your counter races arsenal. Those are my closing comments. Thank you, thank you both. And Mr. Yahoo, please put that information uh, you mentioned as to the um, Discord. And he also threw in another decoding. Um, that thing is very interesting. He says, I suspect since they have always wore animal skin, this is a marketable way to mock the skinny of a victim and wearing the results, a way of conquering the darkness. Very, very interesting more areas of study one can explore <laughs> to understand white culture what white people do what are they doing and why are they doing what they're doing um i do hope this was constructive i do enjoy um discussing um this text race cold war very very constructive super super useful i think this information stuff we should um, have been taught by our attempted parents, but race and white supremacy is very powerful. So it's our duty to, if we're gonna procreate, have offspring, by the time they're two, they should know what, what a clown means. They should know all of the online areas of people activity, and they should know that they're on this planet to solve the race problem. If you can't make that happen, I'll just say that. But yeah, please like, comment, subscribe, let's share this information if you thought it was constructive. And if you're able to support the uh, support the broadcast um, with the money white people allow you to have. Yeah, it's CRWS um, signing out. We'll see you all next week.